In this video, you will learn about the methods that allow for fast whole slide image viewing for digital pathology. Hi, I'm Alexander Zhurov and I'm here to help you do better digital pathology. So if this is what you're after, be sure to subscribe and click the bell below to be notified every time I release new videos. If you remember the digital pathology experience from 10 years ago or even five years ago, whenever you were looking at digital images, it was like invariably slow. Of course, everybody would prefer the microscope. But now when pathology departments and the research institutions decide to go fully digital with pathology, so like slow is a no-go. We just can't work with a slow slide viewing system. So today I invited an expert, Dan Lambert, the CEO of Pathology Watch, who is a computer scientist by training, and he is gonna talk to us about how to make this viewing experience fast, how they did it at Pathology Watch. And he was also a guest of my podcast, so I'm gonna link to the podcast in the description below, as well as he already talked to us in a different video about slide storage. So without further ado, let's hear what Dan has to say about fast slide viewing. One very common problem in the digital pathology world, a part of uh, the storage that we already covered in a different video, is how to visualize those whole slide images fast. These are huge images, how to deliver them fast? And there are two questions that we have to ask ourselves. Why do we need them to be delivered fast? And how fast is actually fast? So the answer to the first question, why do they need to be delivered fast? Because if we want to use it for pathology workflow, for like real life workflow, we have to match what pathologists are doing under the microscope. And the more experienced the pathologist, the faster they go under the microscope. But let's say I'm a mid-career pathologist for a case or for a slide something that i'm familiar with i would need maybe a couple of seconds for something more complex where i'm not so familiar a couple of minutes but when i started my journey in digital pathology even though i was just an entry-level pathologist i had to wait 30 seconds for a slide to open and that was not acceptable and why do we need this fast? Because we want to do our job fast. And there are not too many pathologists. There is uh, definitely more work than pathologists covering this work. So we want to deliver this fast. And I am a lucky person because Dan Lambert from Pathology Watch, he's the CEO of Pathology Watch, is with me here today for the third time. We already recorded a podcast episode together and a video about another challenge of uh, whole slide imaging, how to store them. And I'm going to be linking to those videos in the description below. So be sure to check that. Welcome, Dan. Thanks so much for joining me for the third time. Thanks for having me again. So let's dive straight into what we're going to be talking about. So let's let's uh, talk first before we go into the steps. How do you visualize those things fast? What is acceptable? Your company, Pathology Watch, is delivering digital pathology for dermatologists. How fast are they? How fast is the slowest? And what do you strive for? Do you have like second numbers? Yeah, the, we, we have done um, a bit of kind of timing studies to see how long pathologists are viewing cases. And, and the reality is that it varies very widely. If it's a fairly standard case or something benign, um, you know, you might have a pathologist that's looking at something for a few seconds. Um, if it's mm -hmm. a complicated uh, melanocytic or something that re that's going to require measurements and like a number of things, that is going to take uh, the pathologist several minutes, if not even longer, um, because of the complexity of some of the cases. So there's a lot of variability um, between the between the case types. But one thing that we did always understand was that we had to meet the speed of what pathologists were doing under the microscope, um, intentionally make it faster, um, because that's something that they're always asking for is, you know, is more speed. Um, a typical pathologist has to read, um, you know, 200 plus cases a day. The speed of, of being able to view cases is extremely, extremely important. So if I had to, in the olden days, which were just maybe five years uh, ago, I had to open, it took me 30 seconds to open a case. That's like 
hundred minutes to just open the case. That's yeah, and and pathology I really, I mean, up until just a few years ago, I mean that those were typical speeds. Like you literally would have to wait minutes for like all of the pieces to load, and this was a, like a true engineering problem because you need all of that data, but you need to figure out how to deliver it to the browser, you know, much 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 faster. So, what are the steps to achieve that? So right now we're um, our our images are loading in less than half a second. So we've we've gone from a world that was uh, um, you know thirty thirty plus seconds on average to you know less than half a second sometimes and, and in fact often much um, much shorter than even that the biggest thing to realize is that there are some layers in the pyramid of the image that always need to be viewed the first layer and the second layer uh, the pathologist is always going to see all of those images so we do something called pre-computing we're going to link to our previous video where we exactly explain what this pyramid is Yes, you know, within the pyramid, um, we want to make sure that those top layers, they're always, always, always um, super high availability and they, they're always pre-computed. So when the doctor loads, when the doctor zoom, uh, you know, pulls up the image, all of those images are already loaded, you know, ready to like ready to go. And then as they zoom in, then we're um, then we need to pull images dynamically based on what they're looking at. As the uh, physician zooms into a specific area, we're a lot like Google Maps in that we're kind of dynamically loading all the tiles and all these little pieces around it. So as the doctor is scrolling, it's it's completely seamless. There's no delay as a um, as a physician's moving around. So you walked us through a couple of steps. So first you have to convert this huge image into tiles, right? Correct. Second would be you pre-compute the top layer tiles. And third would be to dynamically deliver them to the browser. How do you do this dynamically? Like we're engineering principle behind it, if <laughs> you can talk about that. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're getting, uh, I'm a computer engineer by training. We're kind of deep getting deep we into the We do want this information the here. here. Um, so yeah, it's basically we're pinpointing the tile the screen is focused on. And so we know, we know the coordinates of where the person is at and we know the zoom layer that they're at. We say, okay, we're on this, we're on this layer of maybe 20x zoom and we're at this specific location the browser in the background is pulling all of these other there are 128 by 128 pixel tiles they're pulling all of those tiles around that central location and on the right layer we're also loading images on the other layers so that because we know if the, if the physician is looking at that specific area they're going to probably look at the 40x or the 10x so that they can view the full range of just that area and so we're dynamically loading the images on the layer that they're at, but we're also dynamically loading the, the images on the layers above and below where they're, where they're at. Um, and it's a very highly focused load. And so that, but they, you know, when the doctor starts zooming around, like moving around, it's completely seamless. Um, and, and our dynamic loading is, is faster and better than, than anywhere else that I've seen. And how does that relate to the internet speed? Does it very much depend on it or is there like a minimum bandwidth where it works and below that it doesn't really work? How does that work? Yeah, um, we're, we're trying to do everything that we can on the server side so that even if the physician is on a slower connection, we're doing the absolute best that we can without losing, without losing any resolution. As long as anyone's on like a typical like cable modem connection or DSL or you know, any kind of fiber, like really any standard connection is totally fine. As long as it's not in a really rural location or it's not dial up or anything like that, um, then, then pretty much everyone's been fine. We have six pathologists that are regularly using this and have no issue or lag with their, their basic home connections. Um, I should also mention this enables pathology to be done from your home in your pajamas and that like that, that's pretty cool too. That's never happened. <laughs> And does it depend on the device, mobile device versus the computer? Oh yeah. Um, so as part of the kind of certification process of being able to even use this for digital pathology, you do need to have a monitor that's you know large enough and compliant with standards mm -hmm. that they can sufficiently load all the images you know while this platform does work on mobile or tablet i mean it's really ideally built for like a true desktop large you know high like ultra high def for 4k screen environment where there's an appropriate monitor for viewing these kinds of images so obviously for diagnostic work but if i wanted like to i don't know quickly scroll through my cases and mark which are more difficult than the others i could do this theoretically on a tablet as well yeah absolutely and in, in fact our 
So our, our dermatologists, this is important to understand, our, you know, our clinicians that are visiting with the patient, they're not lugging around a desktop. They're not making the primary diagnosis. They're mm -hmm. showing the, the image to the patient and showing them, oh, this is where your tumor is and this is why, you know, this is why we need to do surgery. And in, in that case, the, like a tablet works fine. Um, it really just is, you know, for compliance, it's just the, the if they're working on like a diagnosis, um, they really need to have a strong internet connection, high availability, uh, good monitor. Also, it's very important for compliance as well that every pathologist has access to the glass slide as well. It's important to know that this is meant as an addendum to the, tip, to the typical practice of pathology. If um, we wanted to take it a step further and incorporate image analysis in this, what would be the next step? Yeah, um, so, you know, uh, obviously AI and image overlays are, are a very hot topic in, in pathology right now. The benefit of um, being able to overlay a heat map is a couple fold. One is that you can, you can actually dynamically load the tiles around where the heat maps have highlighted a tumor, which can make this considerably faster. Um, but also it draws the physician eye exactly to where it needs to go, assuming that the AI is, uh, is, has accurately identified the heat map. And so we're finding that um, physicians can go actually way faster if everything is loaded super fast and there's a heat map available, they can jump right to it. Like right now, I think a lot of pathologists think that digital pathology is going to be a slowdown, but actually our, our primary physician, Greg Osmond, uh, Dr. Greg Osmond has been, he's a dermatopathologist, is finding about a 30% speed improvement um, just because, I mean, he's not having to load the next slide. It's, it's, it's really fast. Like what, once you get into this, the swing of the system, seeing the image, being able to make the, make the diagnosis like right there on the computer. Um, and then you're just clicking next and it's automatically taking you into your next case. It's, it's mm -hmm. really fast loading. Everything's already preloaded and the ability to move through images very quickly is super important for, uh, um, for pathologists, which are always trying to buy speed. Um, you know, they're always trying to get faster and faster. Yeah, and I can which... confirm those numbers, the, at least the ballpark of those numbers in my Toxpath environment, there have been studies done that claim 30 even to 40 percent efficiency i was not part of those studies so i always take those numbers with a grain of salt but now that you said similar numbers for md pathologists and um, it kind of make a stronger case yeah so, and that's why i mean i i really genuinely feel that there are a lot of advantages to switching over to digital pathology eventual increases in accuracy from the ai from a number of vendors that are working on ai i mean there, there are probably 20 companies that are pushing forward on on developing a number of algorithms right now the speed of of moving between case to case the ability to highlight problematic areas it's, it's clear that this is going to be better patient care and cheaper on a per unit basis by moving to digital pathology. And so we're, we're really evangelists of moving to this system, even though it requires some IT setup and, and headache and all of that. It, it is worth it in the long run if it's done correctly and done in, and done in a very thoughtful, cost-effective manner. Thank you so much for explaining this. And I'm going to link in the description below to our other resources, to the podcast episode and to our previous video. And if you're still watching this, you are fantastic. So be sure to check those resources. Thank you very much. Thank you. So be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified every time I release a new video. And I talk to you in the next episode.